The property table shape will allow us to display information on our flow sheet about multiple streams or multiple blocks, multiple energy streams, right on our flow sheet. And this property table can be found within our Promax streams shape category. I'm going to drag one out and just drop it here on my flow sheet. And to start with, it's just a blank square here. And so in order to put our information into this table, I'll just double click on that square. And you see that brings up this configuration window for me. There are a lot of different options of how we can create this display. There's three different types of tables available. We can have a horizontal table, vertical table, or a moniker table. And I'll go over all three of these, but let's just start with a horizontal table. With this horizontal option selected, it's going to first ask me up here what flow sheet I would like to look at. And so I'm just going to open up the one flow sheet that I have. And then it's going to ask us what we want to see in our columns and what we want to see in our rows. And so the columns is where we're going to select the objects that we would like to report info on. So this will be all of the streams, all the energy streams, or all the blocks that we want information from. Whereas the rows is going to be the actual properties for those objects that we would like to display. So I'm going to start by just opening up the columns. We see again our process streams, energy streams, or blocks. And if I want to show some different streams here on my page, I can open up pstreams and choose the streams I want. To select a stream, you just double click on the stream that we want to display. So I'll double click here on my NGL. And you'll see that now appears as a column in my display. We can have as many streams as we'd like. So if I'd also like to see the sales gas, I can double click on that. Maybe I also want to see stream one, but you might also want to see a particular phase of a stream as opposed to seeing the total phase, which is the default. And so for the NGL and the sales gas, it's going to show the total phase. For stream one, if I want to only look at the vapor phase, I could select vapor from this drop down. And now when I double click on number one, you'll see here in the column it will have my stream name with the phase, the vapor phase in parentheses. Okay, and so I've selected the different streams with their corresponding phases. Let's close our columns and now grab some properties from the rows section. So I'll open up the rows. We can grab properties or compositional information. Let's start out with just some properties. And again, it allows us to choose whether this is stream information, block information. If these are streams with analysis information, that is an option as well. But I'm just going to open up my pstreams here. And we see our list of properties we can select. I'm going to double click on temperature and pressure. And I'll go ahead and double click on mass flow rate as well. And so now we have these different properties within our table. You'll see each has its name with the associated units. Those units have a drop down menu here, and so you can change those units. And then there's also a significant figures column. And so if I want only four degrees or four significant figures for my temperature here, I can type that in. You can change those however you would like. And before we go over the rest of this, the options here, I'm going to just click OK so we can look at what we have so far. We can see this horizontal table has three columns and the three different properties in the rows that we've selected. Let's go ahead and double click to get back to our configuration window and talk about some of the, the display options that we have here below. So all of these checkbox options are going to affect just the presentation of our table. The first one here, show, show border, is just whether or not we want the border of our table to appear. And also we can choose whether or not to have the grid show up. Show symbols has to do with two little symbols you'll see next to the numbers or next to the values in your table. If you ever see a little star or a little asterisk, that represents a value that is user defined, so a value that you as a user have typed in. And if you ever see a pound sign next to a value, that means it's a value that's being calculated by either a specifier or a solver or something of that nature. 
We have the ability, if we have analysis information, to choose to include the analysis name along with the property. And we could choose whether to include the flow sheet name as well. These other options, we have this update always option. And so the property tables are only going to update their values within the table whenever Promax is not running, not trying to converge. But if you want it to continuously update, and so if you want it to update you know, in the middle of iterations and things, you can select this Update Always option. Usually that's not necessary and that would just slow things down, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. The Override Units button, what that will do is it's going to ignore the units that I've typed in here above, and it's just going to use the default units set for our project. This last button in this area here is this copy grid to clipboard. And what that will do, if I select that and then click OK, it will store all of the values in my table in like a control C, control V manner where they're copied. If I now go into say Excel or something, I can just click control V to paste and it will paste this table into Excel or Word or whatever application you would like. Okay. And so that's what these different options uh, allow us. You'll also see here on the far right this significant figures box. If I want to change all the significant figures at the same time, I can type in a value, say I want them all to be three, and I can click set. And you'll see up above all of my properties, sig figs have changed. Okay, and so that's all we need to know here about our horizontal selection or our horizontal tables. Let's talk about some of these other selection options here. I guess before moving on, the horizontal, we also have the even column spacing. If you want all the columns to be spaced the same, that's an option. And this analysis display button is just if you have multiple analyses within a stream, that is going to allow you to organize your analyses in the order that you'd like to see them appear. So anyways, let's move on to the vertical table now. If I select vertical, it's going to remove that table I had created. And the vertical table is no longer going to have multiple columns. It's going to just allow me to put specific properties for specific streams or blocks all in the same column just going down our rows. So let me go ahead and open up our flow sheet again. Let's look at some P streams. Let's say I want stream 1's temperature. I just come on to my properties and choose temperature and that's my first selection. I can then close that and open my NGL stream. I can go to its composition. Uh, let's go to its mole fraction and see how much methane and ethane and propane we have in there. And you can see that we're no longer making columns. These are just each property going down with the stream name next to it. If I click OK, we'll see what that looks like. You can see it has the stream one properties in one grouping and the NGL properties in the next group. If I double click, right next to the vertical selection there was this grouping or group checkbox. If I remove that, it's no longer going to keep my one, my stream one properties and my NGL properties separate. It will just put them straight in a list. If I click OK, you can see what I mean. There's no longer the section headings. There's just the stream names and then each property. If I open that back up, that's the last thing really specific to our vertical tables that I'd like to mention. Before we move on to the moniker type table, I'll also mention here at the bottom, you can see we have a font and color a window that are available. If you click on the font button, you'll see here to our left that you can choose the font, the size, bolding, things, etc. Similarly, if I click on the color option, I can choose what color the grid of the table uh, will be in. This external display button is a VBA connection that will allow you to create VBA in a project and then have that VBA reference this particular table. And so that's something that can be fun to play with, but I won't demonstrate that here in this video. Let's finish off by moving over to our moniker 
table style. If I click on this moniker option, you'll see the short moniker checkbox is selected. And this is going to bring up a list of my short monikers. If you're unfamiliar with short monikers, we do have another web tutorial on those. But these are essentially shortcuts that I've already made beforehand to specific properties that I'd like to show in a property table. Okay, you'll see here that I've listed two properties. I have my first cooler's approach temperature and my cooler number two's approach temperature. And so I can double click on both of those. Those will come just in a, in a straight list here. But this allows me to go to those shortcuts rather than having to look through the whole selection window that we saw earlier. If I click OK, you can see what that looks like. It's just a list of the different short monikers I've selected. And so that is also an option available for these tables. And so we have a lot of variety in the way that we can create our display.